This is the Note Closer Show, where you get the latest developments in distressed note investing and learn the secrets of how you can control millions of dollars worth of property for pennies on the dollar. Get educated and entertained by someone who has closed thousands of deals and lives to support you in achieving the same. Now, here's your host, CEO of We Close Notes, Scott Carson. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Note Closer Show. As always, Scott Carson, excited to be here with you today. Uh, I'm really excited for our special guest today. Uh, you know, we all get hit with so many different emails and advertisements and things like that that are going on in the industry. And I probably get a little bit more than most people do because we're in both the residential and the commercial space. But every once in a while, I get something that makes me have to go, wait, wait a second, let me look at that again. And uh, so was the case just a few days ago. I was, I was really excited to get an email from a company up talking about, you know, bridge financing and, and, and commercial loans and stuff like that. And one thing really caught my attention, and it's the financing of note purchases. And so we're honored to have a star from, uh, you know, the Stabilist Loans here for you, the Stabilist team here. We've got our buddy Juan Rabello, Rabello, correct? Is that pronounced correctly, correct. Juan? All right, All good. Right, I got Robayo. that right. Rabello. Uh, and this guy's had over 22 years of experience in the financial sector sectors team. But prior to joining the Stabilist team, he was a director of fixed income group at Barclays and Lehman for seven years. I'd talk about that. And then prior to that, he actually worked with uh, Stabilist CEO at Goldman Sachs and at Silver Point Capital in the U.S. middle market loan acquisition business. So uh, this guy's got a wealth of experience on the distressed asset space. We had a great conversation on the phone, and I'm honored to have him as a guest on the Note Closure Show. So Juan, welcome to today's podcast episode, man. Thank you so much for the invite, Scott, and happy to be here and happy to share and, and interchange like comments and ideas of what's going on in the markets on these very challenging and interesting times. Yeah, it, it definitely, the, those two adjectives really spell out what 2020 has been. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what Stabilist is doing and what you guys are doing over there, first and foremost, and then we can kind of dive into some of the different products and, and the uh, asset classes that you guys are financing. Great. So look, just to frame the conversation, let me give you a little bit of background of who we are, yep. what we were doing and what we're doing now. So we started uh, uh, Stabilist, Salman started the phone in 2010. I joined three years later. We've raised $1.7 billion since inception. Uh, we're currently on our phone five and with around, phone five was around $550 million in equity. Uh, we have around $200 million to invest between now and next year when we're gonna be raising again, raising capital again. So when we started, we started in the, in the aftermath of the great recession, mm -hmm. we start buying non-performing notes from the banks. So the banks had a lot of problems. They were cleaning up their balance sheet. We were a, a player, a small player on, on a huge trade that was buying non-performing notes from the banks. And, and we invested a lot of money there during the initial funds. And, and, and that's actually our background. That's what we did in Goldman. That's what we did in, in Silver Point before. Was that and more about, so on, on resident or is it a lot of commercial stuff? Residential? Everything commercial? is commercial. We cannot yeah. do we cannot do resi. We can do resi on a portfolio basis, but actually only if it's we don't for our mandate doesn't it's not it's not on the resi side. It's only okay. on commercial. So about four years ago, we decided to I mean part of adjusting to the market dynamics. The economy was going doing well. Banks clean up all the balance sheet. The distress and the distress theme in a way disappeared. So. We saw a niche that a lot of players and similar uh, companies to us saw that is this opportunity to invest on the, on the private lending space. So we created an origination program and we increased the number of, of sources dedicated to cover brokers and, and this type of situations. And we start like covering the market and covering the market. And, and, and to a point that, that especially about Two years ago, we started doing more bridge than note purchases. The banks were not selling, but we're still active on the note purchasing mm -hmm. uh, space. We still have like long relations with, with banks and sellers. So, so we still saw that. Now everything is gonna change. So we were very active in terms of the bridge program. Uh, we are very focused on, on, on uh, cash flowing properties. Yep. Uh, before COVID, we were very active in hotels, which is a very complex 
cash flowing property because it's not only the real estate is the operation on top of that and you need to in a way from a credit perspective understand both yeah so we were big in hotels we were big on healthcare uh, offices uh, and what we call special situations we did a power plant we did some industrial spaces in canada we did operations in a, a couple of transactions of industrial properties in in ireland uh, Puerto Rico, but 90, 95% of our book in the US. Mm -hmm. But looking at different situations and trying to be creative and add value on the loan origination business. Um, then, I mean, very active, fast forward, COVID happened and we took a breather there and tried to understand what's gonna happen. So first we have the reference of our own book. What yeah. we saw in our own book is, for instance, hotels that we had ready for sale we saw on our hotels and general across the board, 20 to 30% correction on good hotels. And then who knows what the, the, the value correction is gonna be on hotels yeah. that are not viable anymore. Right. And um, so probably more than that. So, so in hotels, the idea is we're gonna be very selective and it takes us to the note or no financing and a couple of the transactions that we've done. But that's, that's one of the thing. Then another, uh, Multifamily, we see it very strong still. It varies, obviously. I think I know your multifamily is different than 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 other places or yep. some, probably closer to San Fran, but generally it's very different. But multifamily is a solid asset class. So we see opportunities there. We see, and we see like the consequence of the distressed market or a, or a recession market. So we see uh, maturities coming up. We see acquisition opportunity and we're, we're trying to play and provide financing on those. Uh, industrial very strong asset class especially right now with logistics needs and so we also did a couple of industrial transactions uh, in phoenix in chicago during covid uh, so still looking for for those and then very negative on retail i think at this this season is going to be like a big test because a a, a lot of the I mean, I mean let's see how this this december plays out in terms yeah. of 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 closures and, and business and, and social distancing, but we see that it's gonna be like the biggest, the biggest transaction in terms of, of, of buying all the presents from the internet, not, not going out. So, so very negative on retail. Um, and these are general trends, right? Right. Obviously we do see on a case by case scenario, but, but negative on, on retail, <clears throat> excuse me, very negative on office too very negative on office we were negative on suburban office i think actually suburban office is getting somehow a a, a pickup because people are moving back to the suburbs but still uh, dynamics are not that strong cities are going to make sense but you're going to have a lot of supply and a lot of reconfiguration and a, raw, a lot of readjustments and especially on the large cities and on the large markets and that is going to take a while. Uh, well, we've seen the biggest impacts, obviously, San Fran is one of those, Chicago and New York. And then you have different different impacts to or lesser extent, I think, on, on other metro areas. And then healthcare is an asset class that we like. Uh, we like to work with operators that, again, are facing maturities or the opportunity to refi. Right. Uh, but healthcare is a complex asset class. You need to have uh, you have licensing issues. We've done a couple of relatively large transactions that actually we exited during COVID, a $50 million transaction or so. So, so we, it's not for, for everyone. Uh, we feel that there is an opportunity. So, so we are actually uh, actively pursuing that. And then other asset classes, we did a couple of franchise. We like the franchise. I think it's also some franchises have uh, shown strong performance, some not so much. I think casual dining is, is, a, is a challenging space, but actually the, the transactions that we did are on the casual dining space. And, and we did it in, in two forms. One, in the, during a bankruptcy scenario, we're very comfortable with bankruptcy and, and bankruptcy uh, negotiations and, and and the process that it entails, that it's, again, it's, it's costly, it's, it's, it requires legal, uh, legal knowledge. So we've done it, we've done it so many times. So we started doing a lot of dips or more dips actually this year. Uh, we lost one to a retail, uh, a retail uh, 
operation and we lost it because uh, actually the competition got really, really aggressive in pricing. Mm, Deep is also, I mean, Deep and bankruptcy is, is also like somehow a limited market, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, but very active in bankruptcy in, in bankruptcies and in, in, in restaurants and in, 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 look, we'll see the, what the franchise of and what the future of those are. But, but we're providing liquidity and helping Helping uh, provide helping, helping situations on the on the restaurant. So, I think those are the general like uh, asset classes that we like in terms of how we operate or how we originate our loans. We're very focused on, as I said, cash flowing assets. We can lend up to seventy five percent LTV, um, and we provide liquidity, as I said, on acquisitions, uh, maturing and and debt restructuring and bankruptcies. Um, we, our starting rate is, I would say eight and then some points, uh, we've done lower, but then we compensate in, in our end because we are really the way that we want to see our, our deals is really provide liquidity through a, to a stabilization situation. So, so sh relatively short-term loans, one year with two, six months extensions, when we see light at the end of the tunnel. And then the other asset, which is like a combination of both of, of the note purchase and the and the origination business. And there is one transaction actually that we've been and we've seen a lot now, but it's a note on note purchase. Mm -hmm. So we had a group or we had a situation in which there was a, a debt a maturing or it's about to mature. Somebody bought it, needed to sell the, the, the original lender, needed to sell the, the note for uh, for risk or for liquidity issues, they sort of a sum of discount. Um, the collateral, the original collateral, we got comfortable working with the group on getting a value that they are. They were lending the note that they bought. There was about seventy five percent LTV, mm -hmm. and we were comfortable financing about seventy five percent of the acquisition. So, from our perspective, we are fifty LTV. We're providing liquidity to the buyer. And we can work with them on the on the worst case scenario if that materializes. And from right. a risk perspective, we are facilitating, we understand the asset class, and we have somebody that is willing to operate and capable of operate the asset if anything happens. And those are the key considerations that we're gonna be looking at on the note on note financing. Uh, I think that look, you wanna be uh, you wanna be with in a way you're taking a step back from getting to the assets so you need to make sure we need we we make we make sure that the 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 original node holder or the new node holder actually is going to be able to operate the right. the asset and has the the ability to do it because they're putting equity on it and on yeah. top of that you have the equity of the original asset so we're trying to be protected be conservative i think that in general our approach post covid is um is yeah, some liquidity dried up, some funds like ours and similar in size uh, uh, got some lines pulled. We were, I mean, we were comfortable with our, with our strategy and executing a strategy. So we took advantage of some situation which some other funds were not able to, to, to deliver. But, um, but at the end of the day, we are conscious that whatever happened during this period is how we're gonna be judged in the future when we raise more capital. Right. And how we interact with clients as well. Like, look, we cannot be issuing a, and committing to things which I've seen committing to a lot of, of loans that actually some funds are not able to liquidate, so to execute. So actually, we're very careful in what we actually execute, and we're being selective. And and in general, in general, I think that I mean I'm opti long term uh, optimistic about what the what the economy is going to bring. I think that this is going to be but but our sector got hit really really bad on during all this during all this time. So so we'll see. I mean I think there is a, there's going to be a lot of needs, uh, uh, but the economy is strong. The consumer has been strong. I think the stimulus worked fine, and I think we're going to have a, another round. We'll see what the size of the stimulus is. But it's basically to give to give support to the consumer, the American consumer, which is the 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 main. The main component of the of the GDP, and 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 then give time to everybody to catch up later. But on real estate, it's hard to catch up. If you own a hotel, 
and you didn't have any revenues for a year, you're behind and it's hard to catch up. So there's gonna be a correction. Same thing on rents and multifamily. It's hard to know exactly what that effect is going to be today, but we're gonna see it when we start. And, and we're executing and providing liquidity on, on relatively conservative terms, but to properties and situations that we believe are, 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 are I mean, are fit our profile. Sure, that makes a lot of sense there and a lot of information. Uh, let's let's dive in a little bit of that multifamily. We're just, we're just talking about that. Are you seeing um, banks and other lending institutions, especially based on your background, your connections, and your past, starting to see, because you really have, you have traditional multifamily, but you also have a lot of student housing. I think that's probably been hit harder than your traditional multifamily. Uh, are you seeing some of that student housing stuff kind of floating across your desk or people reaching out to, to finance yeah. stuff? Yeah, good point. So look, and I forgot multifamily, we uh, student housing. We like student housing, but we like some, I mean, under certain criteria. First of all, we don't do a smaller college and I think, is, or, or, or student housing for, for less than 10,000 students or, or 20,000 students, because then you have, you know, but so on the ones that we like, yes, we've seen a lot of, of, of distress and, but but on the on the big on the big campuses, I mean, it's a good opportunity. So sure. we're we're actively looking at that. Um, I would say that well, multifamily in general, as I said, is a very strong yeah. is a very strong uh, asset class. The banks, interestingly enough, but look, if you think about what happened in two thousand and eight, it took a couple of years for all these. Uh, uh, we start seeing a lot of flow from the banks, like a year, year and a half yep. after the after the, the the main the main event, right? In in 08, in September yep. of 08. Or, um, and banks were in, in 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 a totally different position that they are right now. Right. So what we expect and what we've seen is first of all, banks in general have not been selling COVID-related assets. They being the ones that we've seen, it's like the part of the regular process of risk management, and they've been active to it. The ones that are, another ones are coming to the market, and then on the on the COVID related assets, the only big transactions or the only big uh, uh, trades out there have been on hotel portfolios, and some banks are being more proactive than others mm -hmm. because in general, the I think so far, and that's also part of the conversation with, with, this, with these players, is that so far, the regulators have been patient. Right. And the banks are in much better shape. So you don't need to, to push banks to start setting as if they are somehow, we're going to see it and that is going to change. I expect that defaults are going to happen and, and obviously they need to start marking and they need to, and there's a carry cost for the banks to, to have these assets. So I expect that to happen, but so far it, happened, it hasn't happened. Right, uh, but and we expect to happen, and similar to 08, it takes some time. And right now, the banks are in better position than they were in 08. Yeah, specifically when you look at the amount of money that's being saved right now, that's on deposits with them. It's obviously, I mean, the greatest amount of deposits and savings that we've seen in decades. That's obviously helping them with the reserves and, and holding money back to, to, I guess you could say, trickle down or kick the can down the road a few months to figure out where everything is at. Is that correct, Juan? Correct, and, and look, the, all the, the, I mean, a lot of the savings is, is coming a, a big chunk also from the consumer because yeah. the stimulus, I think that actually uh, was, they, they were in general like good public policy to support the consumer and, and, and the, the, the saving rate of the consumer is at all time high. On the, but, but banks, when they see the falls and when the forbearance start expiring, they're gonna need, I mean, the rules are not gonna change, right? It's like, they're gonna start marking and they're, and it's right now, it's like, when is that gonna happen? Uh, and again, as I said before, the, the damage on the real estate is done. I mean, there are hotels that we're not able to support and are not gonna be able to support the debt. So that asset needs to be either restructured or sold or, 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 or DPO it to the borrower in, in some way and, 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 and it's gonna be a repricing of that. So, so again, going back to your original question, I think on multifamily, we haven't seen much. Okay. Banks in general, I haven't seen much from COVID related. I expect that to happen. 
and and banks are in relatively in, in I mean banks are in good shape I, I think to 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 face all this crisis so we're gonna see probably I mean also there is a memory of the crisis right yeah. it's not it's not too far it's far I mean it's far for for instance for people that enter the industry but it's still a lot of people that have been through this uh, the people with with twenty plus or something have been through this and know right. and especially on the bank side so. So I think the challenge is going to be uh, for the banks is um, basically to to have the as the special asset groups uh, resemble again resemble again and, and start like working and because a lot of those of some of these are special asset groups with just a couple of people because yeah. there was no need yeah. but the memory is there the institutional memory is there and. And, and the banks are in, in better shape. And, and also there is a lot of capital. I think that here we're not feeling anytime close the panic and the liquidity panic that we felt in OA. Every crisis mm-hmm. is different. Uh, and this crisis is different in that sense the, that they, I don't see the, the financial market at risk today. And we see capital and, and a ton of capital also has been raised on the big funds at, for the stress opportunity, so right. so that is going to be allocated, and and actually that's one of the things. Like, look on on, on transaction that we saw, the transaction that I mentioned on, on a bankruptcy, complicated, complex, complex uh, pricing. People were willing to put it at relatively low yields because there is liquidity and there is some views. People are taking a, a, a longer view approach to to the to the recovery and to and to some of the opportunities so liquidity is there a lot of smart capital is being raised and and and, and we'll see how it pans out now do you for those uh, investors out there that are looking to pivot or looking to tap in to the distressed asset space I mean you mentioned there's a lot of money out there that's been pulled off the sidelines for a couple of years from some a lot of funds waiting for some of the opportunities but what kind of values do you think you know you're you're, you're normal investor who's looking to tap into some of the stuff is, is should be looking at and evaluate. Are we talking 5 million and below, 2 million and below? You know, can you give any insight to what you're seeing where you think the opportunities are lying? In terms of size, it's going to be, I mean, in terms of size, hard to hard to tell. I think that, sure. look, the hotels, on the hotel side, we've seen, we saw a lot of hotels, you know, hotel financing, and then, and then look, places like New York, San Francisco, yeah. Chicago, is relative is, is is 20 to whatever to to 300 400 million dollars right. and then it's going to be a lot of that i think also the 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 risk on the and look the cnbs market absorb a lot of this risk right. so that's another part that we we'll see opportunity because the cnbs market is probably at half of what it used to yeah. originate and and next year is going to be half of this year until it recovers, so it's going to take time, and and then it's the, the opportunity for, for or the need for capital. We expect is going to come to guys like us at any size, right? right. It's going to be needs at the five to fifty million dollar asset class. That's what we, our focus, and it's going to be capital needs on fifty and above, and that somebody else because the capital is there and is ready to be the right. part. Uh, but again, the CMBs is not going to be able to absorb. And there is going to be maturities. There are going to be uh, restructurings that that are going to be that are going to be done. But, but again, it's, it's going to be. I mean, in terms of size, it's hard to tell. But I think we're going to see everything. Mm-hmm. Have you seen anything already on 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 people pivoting hotel or office space into something that makes more sense? Whether pivoting from office to self storage or trying to turn hotels into apartments or short term housing to get through the uh, the downturn. Yes. So look, a lot of the 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 main one of these uh, like main themes is a lot of the hotels in 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 the cities are not going to be viable for you're going to have two issues. They're not going to be viable for the for some period yeah. of time in the near term, and then also there was an oversupply and over construction because the, of hotels so both of these are going to make and, and we're seeing it on, on some of our assets uh, that are not going to people are bidding not to operate as a hotel but to turn into a multifamily yeah and then what is the cost associated with it what is the, the operation associated with it and and and, and it's not going to be a hotel anymore right. um, i think that 
that's the main i think that's the main the main change of of use on that i think had a lot of um i think on the on the industrial side there's a big demand right so anything that you can reposition and and then also like uh, still i see like uh, build to suit on the industrial and demand for that that's not our game so right. a lot of construction and then and then you see you see we i've we saw a lot and i've seen a lot of construction loans maturing on hotels but the hotels don't have any operational history so yeah. it's what i've seen is like look true bets on okay what was the cost to build this hotel i'm buying it for a fraction but what is the future of this is this really a need for this hotel or not there is a strong need or there's a lot of demand and then you have to go like very asset by asset and right. and and then people are saying okay on that maybe without operational history i'm buying at a deep discount it this hotel has a reason to exist then they continue operating or people are saying okay this is not going to be a hotel anymore how much it costs to turn into multifamily and just take the different pricing on that. Mm -hmm. so. And depending on the saturation of that asset, where it's located and stuff like that, I only bring it up because I, I live on the north side of Austin and within half a mile of where I live, there's probably a dozen smaller hotels, you know, hundred units like the Candlewood Suites or the Courtyard Bar Marriott's, you know, you know, hundred, hundred hotel rooms or less. And several of them are brand new, built in the last 12 months that have not operated at all. They're completely yeah. still vacant. They're done, but you say they still got gates up, not doing anything. So it's interesting to see, you know, because they still have the finance by you know, Compass Bank out in front. And 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 I think that's an opportunity because they're, especially on our side of the uh, town, there's a, a big need for affordable housing. That's why I think the transition makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. And, and that and that is going to be, I mean, that is, is it's on every market, right? Same thing with New York. With New York, we have we had a ton of supply of hotels that they don't have a reason to exist. And you have, well, then you're gonna have the, a bigger pressure on rents. I think that in many other places, at least for in the in the near future. So so also the the multifamily underwriting is a whole other yeah. uh, uh, challenging. But but I mean, but then you have. What are the needs and what are the markets as you were saying in Austin and there are stronger markets and the multifamily in general is gonna and it's look the multifamily uh, yeah from a rental perspective is gonna but a lot of people are also thinking about sellouts and condo sellouts and, and then you have like low rates that are in favor. So so again, there is a lot of product that is gonna eventually gonna is going to be absorbed, is gonna be a matter of pricing and 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 but it's going to be people selling it. They're going to be people selling it. Exactly. Now, when you, you mentioned about financing up to 75% of the acquisition price of the value of the, of the, uh, the loan, when you're doing a loan set, on your traditional brick and mortar, your actual buying or funding on, the, on an asset versus a note sale, is it the same percentage or do you guys look at a different aspect of, uh, of LTV and debt coverage ratios? So if I use the... The, the transaction that we did recently as an example, I mean, the value, the collateral value is the collateral value, right? right. So, so we both agreed on, on that ballpark amount. Uh, we wanted to be on the node on node, since it adds complexity, we wanna be on a lower level versus mm -hmm. the collateral value. We're at 75 of the, of the, of the node amount, right. but by doing that 75%, eventually we, we, we're, more protected on a 50 LTV. Right. Um, and I think that every time that you, look, we don't want to finance a 100% LTV notes. Right. We're not going to provide liquidity of those. So we want to provide no liquidity notes that, that we would have underwrite at 75% LTV. And by doing 75% of that, we're naturally going to be on this 50% right. to, the, to the collateral. So uh, one thing that we add value that I feel that we can add value is that with the, where is the investor on the note, our experience it's been on collecting and navigating the, the, the restructuring of the collection process. So if, mm -hmm. if worse comes to worst, we can be a, a, of, 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 we can add value on the process by, by working with, with, the, with, a, with a group that owns at the end of the day, like 25% of the, of the note. 
So, so I mean, but yeah, the answer to your question is yes, we adjust. Okay. Uh, are you guys looking to finance, let's say somebody's selling an asset class, it's not distressed and it's a cash flowing asset. What kind of LTV are you guys looking to, to, to fund on, on those or like to stay under anyway? No, we're, we're generally, I mean, again, 75 is okay. our cap. Okay. I think that, look, they are, there are, we recently did a transaction that it's a very a challenging asset class and it was a challenging transaction because it was uh, several locations, a portfolio of assets, some closed and non-operating and for sale right. and some. So on that, on that, we ended up being probably at, on a relatively conservative basis at, at 50 LTV or okay. 60 LTV, but that's because of the risk. But on regular, but look, also we have to play with the with the fact that there is liquidity in the market, yeah. and for the good assets that we want right now, uh, the 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 things that we have to to help and to add value is increase the leverage up to seventy five percent and try to close quick. Yeah. If we we are able to close quick in, in two or three weeks, then we'll figure out what the due diligence are uh, requirements are. But we've done it. I mean, we do side visit. We're very thorough in our due diligence, and and, and, and we execute. Question for you, with raising over a billion dollars in capital, any insight to effective strategies for raising that amount of money? It's tough market out there. I mean, I think that, and, and, and I was just talking to someone. Uh, I think that the market, I think, look, a lot of the big funds raised capital and billions of dollars to be ready for this. And they had also uh, interesting strategies in which for some funds, if you wanted to invest in this fund, you you also committed extra amount if an opportunity like this happened. And then all of a sudden you have extra cash that was raised that right. way. So that that I saw it on the on the big funds. And also look the so so it's becoming like a a, a story of if you have the if you have the the investment history is going to be easier not it's going to be easy but it's going to be easier that if you're starting a fund right now uh, this year i think it was hard for 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 new funds to find money because it's hard to to develop this dialogue if you cannot travel etc right and 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 that's what i was saying at the beginning i think the key consideration is going to be how do you guys did during covid and, and that's the main, I think that's the first question that's going to happen if you're going to be raising capital later next year. Um, and we'll see where the market is. I think right now it's been a tough market for, for people that needed to raise capital. And, yeah. and also I saw it was a tough market to, to funds that had leverage and the lines were pulled because they needed to, to, sell, to sell assets. Awesome. Uh, Juan, what's the what's the best way for people to to reach out to you? And is there like I said, maybe not everybody because not everybody's going to qualify that. But those that are working on a project, what's the best type of projects for them to reach out to you to see if it's a, a fit for what you guys are looking to finance? Uh, minimum dollar amount and, and asset class or specific cities, you know, primary cities or secondary markets. What's what's the the, the, the mm -hmm. assets dollar amount? I guess you say areas that you're looking to finance. So look. And, and to summarize, and I think, uh, and I appreciate the question because it really gives me the opportunity to 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 put the box out there. So we're yeah. looking for to provide financing between we can do small loans, which is something that that we're we're not many people do, and we're happy to provide liquidity on 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 in loans not less than two million. So minimum loan is two million. We can go up to fifty million. We can go even further and we can bring partners if needed, but I think that at the 50 million is the mark where some of the larger funds, yeah. they say, look, it's too much. I don't, I need to do 50 and above in order to really yeah. uh, uh, justify the, all the capital that I raise and all the attention that I, and, and all, the, all the work that is needed. So, so we do anything between two to 50. Uh, cash flowing properties only. Our pricing, which is, starting rate at eight, maybe seven and a half, and then we can we can adjust on the points. Uh, it's gotta be a reason for it. It's gotta be some either urgency to close, which we can deliver in, 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 in most of the cases, that's our commitment that we're gonna put all the resources to close as soon as possible. So urgency to close either uh, 
end of year event for banks or for funds that need to right. sell and they need to mark the assets or a bankruptcy or a for an imminent foreclosure in, in states where with like Texas where you are or, or, or fast here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So the, when there is urgency, like look, there is and, and you need the money and then you and but cash flow and properties. And I think in terms of asset class, as I said, multifamily we like industrial uh, healthcare, hotels selectively. And, and, and on the hotels space, we like to work, we're working a lot with a couple of groups that operate hotels and they're looking to expand, that they see this as an opportunity to expand the footprint, that they, they, they've been successful in certain markets, they're very comfortable in certain markets, they wanna see, look, I know how much exactly this hotel X and X is, is because I have another one, yep. three blocks, or and I understand and I can do it, and this is the price, but I have, I don't have all the capital or, or I'm committing to a bunch of, of, of this. So we're working with, with groups like that. We're also working with groups that are bidding on, on, on portfolios of hotels or notes for sale. So on, that's the, what they note and note in, in this, this, these portfolios are being sold by, by the big brokers. Yeah. And, 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 and yes, they have the capital to do one, but eventually it's another one next month and they want to do it and they'd like to, to, so we're working with those. So, so any group that is buying nodes and would like to have leverage, uh, that's an opportunity for us. Any loan uh, that have urgency or some complexity uh, between the two and, and $50 million mark, cash flowing, happy to do. We get a lot of, I get a lot of requests of, of land loans, development loans, construction loans, that's not for us. Uh, unfortunately, because I think there are opportunities there are people doing it. We just don't have the the long term right. uh, capital to to be there like probably four or five years. We don't know. Right. How, I mean, I don't know how how much the, the when the new development is going to happen in in Jersey or in New York for that matter. Right. Um, so I think those are the those are that's the and and the best way to contact us is our website stabiliscap dot com. Uh, my name is there. My colleagues' name are there. Uh, we pick up the phone. I, I mean, some people uh, uh, may may say that I that sometimes it takes, it, it, especially during COVID, it took a couple of days to return the call. But I try to do it the same day, and and to return every call because because that's how you find the opportunities and that how we've been able to execute and and to deploy capital in these very challenging times. Working yeah. with partners and working with brokers, and we work we work with brokers. We recognize the reciprocity. We pay brokers on the day of, of on the day of of disbursement from loan proceeds, so it's transparent, and and we pay between fifty to a point, and maybe more if it if the if the transaction uh, supports the the deal and their involvement. But but look, I I think that it's 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 a uh, it's a um, uh, an opportunity like this requires cooperations, and it goes both ways. It go, it comes from the capital, but it comes also from the brokers that I see that are seeing a bunch of things that we don't see. Uh, and also, the other area of, of, of focus for us is all the restructuring advisors. Mm -hmm. So, any restructuring advisors right now that are working with companies looking for liquidity, uh, that's a lot of what I do. And 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 we've been like closing many like an acquisitions that they need leverage for the real estate. In order to to optimize the equity contribution, um, you name it. I mean, there are many opportunities there. So so that's that's also an area that that we would love to hear and work with uh, whoever is listening uh, about how we, how we can help. Awesome, big most important question of the night: What's being cooked? What's for dinner? <laughs> no, it's seven forty-seven. It's seven forty-seven on the East Coast, so. Uh, all this, all this time has been, has been a, a blessing here because we have a, a newborn baby. Congratulations! So we had, we we're having dinner at six p.m. or five forty-five. So this is, this it already happened. <laughs> Good stuff up there. Well, Juan, thank you so much for coming on and, and taking time of your busy schedule and stuff like. Thanks for answering the phone. Thanks for responding to emails. I really appreciate it and uh, look forward to working with you on some deals that we get come across our desk as well. All right, brother. 
I appreciate your time, your invitation, and look forward to hearing from you guys. Sounds good. All right. All right, All right guys. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. All right, guys. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Note Closure Show. Uh, a lot of great information from Juan there. Talk about different opportunities, where to look at, and what they're looking to finance. And so uh, keep your ears up. Keep your, your, your uh, you know, nose the grindstone so you know what's going on out there so you can see opportunities. And hey, might just be a way for you to step in and uh, make some either broken some deals or finding uh, some financing for yourself or an owner-operator or another investor out there. For so go out, take some action, everybody. And we'll see you all at the top.